What's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video and today we're taking a closer look at the setup of the iPolo V1 Mini Classic Plus Wi-Fi Ethereum Classic ASIC Miner. A pretty long name for a pretty interesting miner and in the last video we did the unboxing, we checked out the hardware, but today we're going to do the software installation and we're gonna plug it in, check out the efficiency, check out um, also which hash rate we can get and let's get started and let's check it out. Well guys, let's go. Here's the miner. We're here in my gaming room. Now it will be too noisy to stay in the room because I'm working here editing videos. But anyhow, I have my server rack right over here. We have the power meter. And now we have two options. First of all, we can configure it over Wi-Fi because when you connect it to power, it will broadcast an open Wi-Fi you can connect to and set it up. But I will go the Ethernet way. So you just connect via cable and then you set up the Wi-Fi. And yeah, let's just do this. And there we go. So here we have the server, the modem, the switch. We just take the ethernet cable and plug it here into the ethernet port on the back. That's it, and now the power supply. So guys, the power supply goes in here and then we have here the six pin connectors. They just go into power one, power two. It doesn't matter where you connect which one because they're both the same outputs. And let's do this. All right, and now we flip the switch to turn it on. Well, now it's time to find out the IP. You have the IP report button right over here. So wait a little bit until it really boots up. And then you press this button right over here. And now you go to the computer to open up the IP report software to find the IP of the miner on the network. Alrighty guys, so open up the software first, press the IP report button. And then as you can see, um, you actually get the um, Ethernet IP. So it's 192, 168, 178, 153. If we now um, just put that into the browser, we can actually get to um, the um, user interface to configure it. And we'll switch now to the PC to check this out. Well guys, the miner is now running stable and it's connected here with the ethernet cable to my server rack. So here we have the switch, but it's also connected to Wi-Fi. Now to get most out of it, so most of the hashing power, it is really recommended to use the cable. Just in case, if you cannot use a cable, you can also use the Wi-Fi function. But what about um, the power consumption? So the power consumption right now, as you can see, it's around 260 watts by delivering almost the full power. So it's plus minus 10% always on those machines. But as you can see, it's working fine. Now the noise level. So to have this in your living room or in your sleeping room, um, I wouldn't recommend. So base is 55 dB, um, can go up also a bit higher depending on the um, environment temperature. Now this room is really hot because of all the electric components right over here, but I will not just keep it in any kind of room where I live or in the office where I'm doing some work. Anyhow, make sure you can get it wired up, get a place where you have nice airflow, and then the machine is just running really fine. All right, guys, so we're now here on the computer. Let's check out the user interface of the miner. I'm sorry if you can hear the miner in the background, but it's right now here in my room. And yeah, let's go and let's check it out. So, well, in order to log in to the user interface, now, um, first of all, you have to find the IP as I've shown you before, and then you just enter this IP into the browser. So I hope it's now, ah, it should be this one. So, um, let me show you how it looks like when you're logged out. So here you can see iPolo, here you can see um, just the login screen. Now the basic um, password to log in is root. So the username is root and the password is root. You just log in and there you go. Now here you can see um, the running overview. Basically what you can see right over here is the firmware version. You can see um, the ethernet IP, the Wi-Fi IP, if you're connected to Wi-Fi, I'm currently just connected to Ethernet. Um, you can see here the uptime, so it's running for around about 24 hours, so this is also good to see the hash rate on the pool. It is running right now um, with the current hash rate of 280 mega hashes per second, but this is the current hash rate. It's really important to always check the 24 hour hash rate on the pool. You can also see um, the temperatures of the hash boards and you can see um, the RPMs of both fans, as you can see, 7,200 to 7,400. So that's um, a noise level, which um, um, I would not want to have in my living room. But if you just place it into the garage, the basement, or in any room where you don't um, do things, where you don't have to get distracted, that's perfectly amazing. So um, you can see here also a graph with the real time hash rate. And if we check this out on the pool, I'm currently using F2 pool. Then you can see that we have a hash rate 
of um, 267 over 24 hours. This is perfectly well in the plus minus 10% um, advertised hash rate. It will be a little bit more after because it's not running for 24 hours yet. So there's half an hour missing. So we'll go up to 270, 275 with everything and which is perfectly in the plus minus 10% uh, which Ipolo um, advertised. So um, you can also check out here um, the iPolo V1 Mini Classic Plus um, on ASIC minor value. So here you can also basically see the profitability, which is right now actually quite good. So um, as you can see per year, you can make $2,400 with um, um, the value of the coin right now. But if ETC after the merge maybe doubles or triples, then um, the money you make is quite good. So don't sell off your coins, you mine try to save them until they go up then you can make a really good profit and you still have the value of the machine and you can resell the machine or just continue mining but um, the main question is how to set it up so this is what we are checking out in this video and let me quickly show you how it works so first of all in the information overview you can see all your pool urls you can see the username you can see if it, it's getting shares as you can see um 10,000, 11,000 accepted shares, 68 rejected, 86 rejected. So this is pretty good, almost no rejected shares. Um, the minor configuration, that's the page where you want to head to to set it up. In here, you have to put in the pool URL, the worker name and the password. Now, where do you get all this information? You have to register for a pool. So I'm currently using F2 pool, but you can use any pool you want to. So basically, um, if you check poolwatch.io or any pool comparison website, um, there are plenty of pools where you can mine ETC. F2 pool is actually one of my favorite ones because it's really easy to use. You have one account right over here. So you register an account. That is your account name. As you can see, Tech Magnet is currently mining with roundly 298 mega hashes per second. Um, you can see the ETC hash rate here over the last 24 hours. Um, I currently made 0.1 something ETC and the 24 hour hash rate is 267, but it's not running for a full 24 hours yet. So the pool URL, the most important thing now um, on every pool you register, you will have one um, sub page where it explains you how to set it up for your miner. On F2 pool, it's really simple. You just copy the links right over here, the URLs. The URL consists out of the URL part, the protocol and also the port. Make sure to copy everything. You can just press the copy button right over here. And then you just copy that into the URL um, field right over here. The worker name on F2 pool, it's your account name. I put in tech magnet, password, you can just leave it blank, put in one, two, three, whatever you want to. Then also there are backup pools, just in case um, if the main pool is not reachable, um, it uses the backup pool um, and there are two of them. So one is the 8180 port and one is the 8181 port and you just fill them into pool 2, pool 3. There's also API configuration, but if you don't want to use that, just simply don't touch it, leave it as it is and you can just start mining. Um, in order to save that and apply it, there's a button right over here, save and apply. And after that, I would restart the machine with the button right over here, just to make sure it got the config, but you don't have to. There's also network configuration. So we have um, either static or DHCP. Now, most of the routers support DHCP anyway. That means that the router is assigning an IP to your miner. So um, the only thing where this could be not so good is if you really want to often check your user interface, if you have some restarts of your network, then the IP could change. Um, if you want to give it a static IP, you can just switch to static and put in everything yourself to have a fixed IP for the miner. There is also the fan configuration, but I would recommend not to touch it, just to touch it if you know what you're doing. Um, my room here is so hot, guys, I'm melting currently here. This is why um, I keep it on basic and the, span, the, the fan sometimes really spins up a lot as you can hear right now because it's really, it has over 20 degrees in here because of all the components, all the computers running. So the minimum fan speed, you can set it to minimum, which is 50%. The maximum is 100, but the default fan I just put here to 100 because it's really hot right now, but you can also put it to 60, which is the default value. Then you go to save and apply and it will override um, the fan speed configuration of the miner. There's also the wireless configuration. Now, um, I'm currently using the latest firmware, which is 65.83. This is the firmware where I got the best results. 
and um, Apollo is really developing a lot of firmware for it. So um, I reached out to the support and they said, wait, we're putting in this new feature for the firmware, this new feature. And this is something which is amazing because on some companies where you buy a miner, they will never get updates, they never get new features, you have some bugs, they will never get resolved, but here this is working really fine. So wireless overview as you can see um, you can just set up right over here so you can just go to scan it will scan your wireless networks and there we go so it's starting the wireless scan right now and there um, we have home 6 so that is my home network so just go to join network I just put in here my WPA passphrase and that's basically my password so let me put this in here right now um, I go to submit uh, no, I don't want to save that. Then I save right over here. You don't need to touch anything of the settings. And then you have Home 6 as client. You can remove, if you want to disable um, the iPolo Wi-Fi. There you go. And then you just save and apply the settings and the miner will connect to Wi-Fi. In order to get the best results, I really recommend to use Ethernet. But as you can see, Wi-Fi works really good. So we have now the Ethernet IP and the Wi-Fi IP. So this is how you set up Wi-Fi, super simple, scan, put in the password, go to enable, save, and it will connect to Wi-Fi. So that's amazing. If you have any issues with the miner, there's a running log, so you can see basically what's going on with the miner, but there's also an error log. So if you have any issues, now um, for sure, every time you do something with the configuration, it will put something into the error log, but as you can see, there are no errors right now um, as it's mining with the full speed. So if you have any issues, you just take this log and you send it to iPolo and we'll find out how to help you. Then um, we have the password change. Now, once you set it up and everything is set up, you should change the password so that you don't have any unauthorized access to your miner that they will change something, change the, um, the pool and wallet address or whatever. So make sure to change the password because the basic password is just root. Then we have um, firmware upgrade. Here you can just flash a firmware image. You can download it from the iPolo website. So you just browse for the firmware image. You go to upload and it will flash the image. You don't need to put the firmware on SD cards. This all works over the user interface and that's really convenient. Okay, last but not least, we have diagnostics. So um, if you're not sure if your um, internet connection is working fine, um, you can do here an IPv4 ping, you can do IPv4 trace route, you can do an NS lookup. So just to troubleshoot that everything is fine with the internet connection. Then we have system reboot. This performs a full reboot, but anyhow, if you really want to reset something, I would recommend to unplug it, replug it, especially after a firmware update. And last but not least, we have the logout button. So as you can see, the user interface of the miner is really easy to use. All you have to do is just find out the, the correct IP, log in, put your pool details, and we'll start mining. Now we just restarted it because we connected Wi-Fi and it will take some time until it cranks up the hash rate to the full 300 or 280 mega hashes per second. But always make sure to check out after 24 hours because then you can really see is the miner running stable. And in this case it is because as you can see on the pool, we have a hash rate of around 270, but it's not running for full 24 hours yet. And um, yeah, it's looking actually pretty good, which is around about 0.1 something ETC per day. All right, guys, so it's that simple to set up the iPolo miners. Basically, on all those iPolo miners, it's the same. They have similar looking dashboards. Um, you just connect them to power, connect them to your network, and you can start mining. And after that, you don't need to touch anything, just in case if there is something going on, like the hash rate is dropping, you just reboot the miner and it should go back to the full hash rate. And if you have any problem, you can just um, paste the error log into the, into the support chat of iPolo and they will um, try to find out what's going on with your miner. All right, so if you want to have more information on the miner, make sure to check out the links down below. Also, I have $200 discount on the iPolo V1 Mini. It's a really good if you're a miner and with $200 discount, it's absolutely worth it. And as always, guys, um, if you have any questions about the miner, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. And I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.